Hey everybody, welcome back to the Dungeon Dive. Daniel here. I hope you're doing well, and if you're not, I hope you are soon. Okay, welcome to the first episode of Solo RPG Fridays, this new ongoing series. I have lots of cool stuff planned, so I hope you guys enjoy it. Okay, today's topic is going to be six tips on playing solo RPGs, of starting solo RPGs. These are six things that I've actually five things that I have learned over the past couple of years. And uh, one topic that came up while I was discussing these five things with other people. So let's get going. Okay, number one, and this is super important. This is something that I always have to remember myself, something that I fall prey to all the time. And that is start small. This is something that I always have to keep in mind my imagination is much bigger than what the logistics of any game can handle i always start too big in terms of scope and materials used if any of you watched my video my, my one of my first series the 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 peril of symboline island in my in my initial video for that i said i was going to be using like 40 different things and combining all of these games and all of these pieces, all of these tools and systems into a huge epic game. And I ended up using like five different things. And so much of what I said I was going to use in that video was not used. In a recent video, I kind of started to create a world map to play in. And I used a huge table sized map and made this entire elaborate uh, world to play in. And I'm actually just going to go ahead and redo that in a little small map and start with like one or two hexes. So always start small. It's much easier to expand. And when you start small and have to expand, it feels like you're making progress. It feels like you are succeeding. You are winning because you are continuing to expand your game. When you start large and then have to shrink down, it psychologically it kind of feels like a failure because you're not using everything that you meant to use and so starting small is usually a psychological win okay number two is start in the middle in media res so they say um starting at square one at the beginning is often much harder than starting in media res Take a cue from things like Indiana Jones and start in the middle of something impactful. You know, Raiders of the Lost Ark starts in the middle or towards the end, actually, of a quest. Uh, Temple of Doom starts in the middle of a conflict. So try to start your sessions on something impactful, on something that is going to lead to more exciting things down the road. Again, one of the failures that I had to overcome in my Perils of Symboline Island Isle series is that I started with my character getting off the boat, basically coming into this new city and having to find a place to, to live, to stay. That's not exciting. That's not going to entice me as the player to keep playing. I should have started at the end of him, of, of my character finding some great MacGuffin or facing off against some kind of adversary. And then I could have taken it from there to see where that conflict that has already started would lead me to. Okay, number three, if you get stuck, cheat. GMs cheat all the time in RPGs. They cheat all the time to push the story forward, to push the plot forward. Do that as well. Remember, you are the GM and the player. And it's okay to act to to cheat when you have your GM hat on. You know, GMs behind the behind their screens will flub roles. They will take an NPC from one place and shoehorn them into another. They will take a dungeon from one place and put it somewhere else. You know, that is part of being a GM, uh, adapting the story on the fly to what the heroes are doing. Uh, giving the heroes an illusion of choice, but always kind of like trying to keep them, not trying to keep them on, my, on a path, but it's kind of a magician's choice. You know, uh, 
they don't know that they're being railroaded when they are. And you kind of have to trick yourself when you're playing uh, these kinds of games solo to do that. So just don't be afraid to cheat. Don't be afraid to just say, hey, you know what? Uh, this is going to happen because one, it's cool. And two, it's going to entice me to continue playing the game. Okay, uh, number four. Number four is if you come from a board game background, forget everything you know. Um, if you're coming from a background of adventure and dungeon crawl board games, which a lot of us on the dungeon dive are, try to forget the notion of strictly structured play and like structured rules. You'll need to be more fluid than you probably are. Okay, so the forget everything you know, that's kind of like the clickbait. The important part of this number four is you'll need to be more fluid than you are used to. You aren't going to have, uh, depending on the system, depending on what you are using to play, you're not going to have as strictly defined turns or phases. You're not going to have a, a list of things you can and can't do. You aren't going to have a, you're not going to have as many guide rails uh, telling you how to play the game. So you're going to have to learn to be more fluid. And that is part of the draw. That is part of the fun because sometimes a board game can just be too structured. And one of the things that has been drawing me to solo RPGs more than board games recently is, well, there's a number of things. That's a whole nother topic. So I'm not going to go down. I'm not going to go down that road right now because that's something we're going to talk about in another episode. So uh, number five, if you're coming from a traditional RPG background, remember the things you love. Uh, remember those moments from past games that stuck with you. Why were those moments memorable? It probably wasn't because of some rule or system. It was probably something cool that happened to your characters or party or something cool that happened while you were sitting around the table with your friends. Work on recreating that within the confines of solo play. You will probably have to be more structured than you are used to because you are the person acting in all the roles. So this is kind of like the, the, the other side of the coin of number four, whereas if you're coming from a board game background, you're gonna to have to be more fluid if you're coming from an RPG, a traditional RPG background, you're probably going to have to be more structured just because you don't have that banter of constantly uh, the, the banter that's happening around the table that can naturally lead your, your, your characters and you into fun situations. So there's going to be a little more structure, but just try to keep in mind those great moments in your past and great moments you've had playing with your friends and working on developing ways to recreate those moments just with you at the table. Okay, here is a bonus one, number six. This, uh, this topic came up while I was discussing the other five with some people online, and that is you don't have to account for every day, hour, month, for every second of your adventure, of your hero. Don't worry too much about downtime unless it's not really downtime. If it's boring, skip it. Go read a whole bunch of fantasy stories. And what you're going to find is they skip a lot of the boring stuff. Even when the characters are having downtime, like in an inn or a tavern, it's not really downtime. They're not just sitting there doing nothing. They are progressing the plot in conversation. They are progressing the plot by meeting somebody. Uh, some chance meeting that they might have you know downtime in fantasy fiction may seem like downtime when we think about it but in terms of plot it's usually not try to emulate the way sword and sorcery fiction is emulated and keep things more episodic start each adventure or each session with your character going on a quest finding something new you know give them start with a purpose and then work towards that purpose and then when that purpose has been satisfied reset you know less like epic fantasy which is kind of a long and drawn out where it does show a moment by moment progression you know especially with solo role playing we want to try to focus more on an episodic um element an episodic structure 
That's not always going to be true. Sometimes you do want to account for everything, but these are just tips to help guide you, especially to help guide people just getting into solo role playing. So that was start small, start in the middle. If you're stuck, cheat. If you're coming from a uh, board game background, forget everything you know. You're going to have to be more fluid. If you're coming from a traditional RPG background, remember the things you love and know that you're going to have to be a little more structured. And you don't have to account for every moment of your adventure. So another topic that came up while I was discussing these with, uh, with, with the Dungeon Die patrons is uh, somebody asked, how do I keep my interest to actually move on to a second session? And that is a really good question. And that's actually something that I asked Deborah from Geek Gamers uh, a couple of years ago when I was just getting into solo role playing in her video for uh, Disciples of Bone and Shadow. I asked her, you know, how long does she typically keep a game set up? How long does she keep a session going? And she told me that usually she is like kind of one and done. She'll do a session, she'll make a video, and then she'll go on to another game. Um, so, but when she's having a lot of fun, when she's really invested, she'll do it for, she'll keep it going for multiple sessions. So it is, there is this challenge. How long do you keep one game set up? How long is your campaign? How many adventures are you going to string together? And I think the best way to entice yourself to stay focused or to stay entertained, to focus on something for more than one session, it's really by following these steps. If you start small then you can break free of those confines that you've put. Like if you start on with, with five hexes filled in a little cluster, then you can play one session. And maybe uh, when you travel north, you might roll up on a table. You might roll a clue of something that is further to the north. Well, that could entice you to on your next time you sit down to discover, to adventure out and find what is going on more in the northern region of your map. Um, if, if you get stuck at the end of a session, cheat, you know, uh, don't try not to create roadblocks, try not to create uh, dead ends. If you happen to create a dead end, if you happen to, to paint yourself in a, an adventure corner <laughs> where you have no way out, cheat. An eagle comes, the eagles, uh, <laughs> Have the eagles come and swoop down and save your character. And then you're like, what What, what the heck's going on? And, and some wizard has, has summoned you to, for a quest. Uh, never feel afraid to just kind of, um, you know, if you put effort in creating your character and you like your character, you like the system you're working in, if you like the, the, the beginning of your game, of your session one and your session zero, session zeros are always fun, right? Because that's where the... Uh, that's where the the um, the chances. That's where the opportunity. The um, you know you the, the 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 horizon is so broad and open during session zero when you're just creating your stuff. But um, you know if you can get don't don't worry about dead ends. Just cheat your way out of them if you want to continue playing. And that's probably the best way to to go on to other sessions. Sorry guys. Well, I hope you enjoyed this first episode of Solo RPG Friday. We are going to be doing uh, like kind of uh, philosophical talks like this on, on systems, on tools, on tips. Um, I have a couple of interviews lined up. I'm going to be interviewing uh, Deborah from Geek Gamer. So we'll, uh, we'll be talking about her book and some of her philosophies on solo role playing. Um, I'm going to be getting together with uh, Perplexing Ruins uh, probably once a month that we're going to be having a an online chat a, a video chat about ongoing cool things in the world of indie tabletop games so uh, to keep you guys you know um in the loop on cool things to look for on crowdfunding and things that are out maybe some highlights and things that are on itch.io because i know there's so much out there and so uh, having somebody like him on the show who is going to be able to kind of uh direct our focus on things that are are potentially cool and potentially worth our time and money. That's going to be a lot of fun. And then we're also going to do some uh, less plays, some actual plays and, and stuff like that. So hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you enjoy this series and we'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.